Hey, it's Travis Stairwell coming to you from the Air Power Live Studios in High Point, North Carolina, the corporate office and home of Air Power Manufacturing Solutions. All right, so we're going to have a quick conversation here about automation. Uh, automation as it as it is, relates to the finishing business, okay? So uh, let's, let's kind of take a step back here and, and look at it quickly. Where did automation start in the finishing business? There are a lot of different machines that can automatically spray coatings on parts. I would say probably in uh, Henry Ford's day, he looked at finding ways to automate and repeat things over and over right. again. So back in the 20s, uh, the, the 1900s, as my grandchildren say, I'm from yeah. the 1900s. So back then is when it certainly started. In the wood industry, it was all a manual process. Everything remained fairly manual until in the 80s when they started to automate, add automation in the sawmills and in the different uh, profiling equipment that they used and then finishing as a result of all of that. So I guess we got to break down a little bit. You got to break down uh, autom. Uh, <laughs> I got the word atomization on the brain. You got to break down the word automation and to define that really, because automation can be, you know, it, it's basically by definition, I guess, would be a hands-off process that does something for itself, right? Right. So uh, you have a lot of like automatic lines that are carrying parts through a line whether that be wood or metal or, or glass or plastic or whatever it is. Right. But the sprayers are still manual. You know, you, you have combinations of things, right? So uh, where was the big impact? You know, we just completed that podcast, the two-part podcast right. on wood finishing. Yeah. So when did, when did autom uh, uh, automation really take hold with the, with the wood side of the business? In the late 80s, uh, our, our industry trade show, the International Woodworking Fair, uh, uh, we had a, a flatline manufacturer uh, show up there with a spray machine that would spray a high volume of parts with a conveyor, a belted conveyor that pulled parts through them okay. on actual steel bands. The parts would be conveyed through a spray area and the steel bands were scrubbed clean as they rotated back up okay. and were used in a, in a circuit, a belt, a cleaning belt. Okay. And that has evolved substantially since then, but that was in the late 80s and the machine that they brought over from Italy actually is where the manufacturer is located was bought and installed that year in Iowa. All right. And has remained there until the early 2000s when I actually replaced it with a more updated version. It's interesting. There are a number of lines from Italy that I see. They specialize. That are specialized uh, wood. In, in Italy and in Germany, they specialize in flat line finishing equipment. Okay. Uh, they make s some of the finest engineered solutions for the Finnish industry by far. And they, uh, as of last year, in the United States alone, sold over 1,000 spray machines. 1,000 spray machines. And a large volume of those are for the equivalent cost of one manual sprayer their salary and benefits for a year. So they're affordable solutions right. that shops of any size can actually buy and use as a replacement to automate their finishing process, gotcha. get a more consistent product, and reduce the labor costs significantly. Yep. And going back to something that we've talked about so many times on this podcast and definitely on the previous two the actual podcast with with you two was just because you go into automation and you have a flat line does not mean you don't need employees nope. you have to have employees to manage the filters to manage the pumps to manage the actual you know the feed lines to the spray guns there there's so many different things that they have to keep their eyes on it just takes away the random 
the randomness of how good the part is when it comes off the line. Right. In a lot of cases, that smaller shop, they run the machine one time a week and everybody goes over there and loads the parts and offloads the parts and makes sure the machine's running right, it does all the spray spraying yep. for them. So yep. they're able to use the tool to make a better product. And that's where you have a, a repeatable, uh, repeatable repeatable film build. You know, you're getting the, that paint exactly where you need it every time. Yep. And so that's cool. Okay. Uh, and the, the other thing that we talked about uh, was, you know, air power, um, our, I don't know if you call it our motto, but our, our competencies are broke down into three categories. Yep. Assemble, move, and coat. And we had dinner last night, and you brought something up when we were all out to dinner. I certainly feel like all of your capabilities do exactly what these customers need nowadays. They need to find ways to automate or control, repeat, as much as possible of the process of assembling, moving, and coating their products. Yep, that's it's right. critical, and you guys are the go-to for that. You provide all of those solutions. So, Lynn, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You uh, you are an account manager with AirPower. Correct. You spend a lot of years in the industry, even without with outside of AirPower. Um, in our assemble, move, and coat. As that as that relates to automation, what are you seeing in your in your world out there? Do you see more of a drive for automation? Absolutely. We had a brief conversation last night about um, robots. Yep. Spraying, not necessarily a flat line, um, but trainable robots to do a repeatable process for three dimensional type pieces, chairs, small tables. Um, that kind of gets you away from the, the, the inability of a flat line to be able to do profiles. Yep. So it's, it's advancing more and more and getting, um, you, you have the opportunity now to uh, eliminate operators in other aspects of the finishing process, not just the knockdown type spray applications. Yep. All right, guys. I think we covered our little conversation on automation. Manufacture it a great day.